Let me read from the New York Times TV critic. Just a couple of pieces. In an event aboard the decommissioned aircraft carrier Intrepid, the Today, uh, Matt Lauer is the host of the Today Show, the Today host was lost at sea, seemingly unprepared on a military and foreign policy specifics. He performed like a soldier sent on a mission without ammunition, beginning with a disorganized offensive, ending in a humiliating retreat. I, I don't know if this, uh, this Times critic had all of these sort of analogies <laughs> just waiting for the proper moment. But he, later in the piece, he writes, In general, though, Mr. Lauer's questioning of Mr. Trump was like watching one student quiz another to prep for a test neither had done the reading for. The host asked soft, open-ended questions that invited the candidate to answer with word clouds. <laughs> oh, boy. Let's listen to uh, the sound. And, and these, you know, th th this is across the spectrum, honestly. I don't think I have seen such near unanimous condemn uh, condemnation of a moderator. I mean, the only thing I could think is that, like, Kella, Kelly Ripa feels she just moved up a notch <laughs> on the scale of hard-hitting journalists. <laughs> Here uh, is CNN, Dylan Byers, and Brian Statler commenting on Matt Lauer, Lauer's forum performance. I saw the journalistic challenge of this decade. Interviewing Donald Trump and challenging him when he is wrong is the journalistic challenge of our time. Hillary Clinton is a challenge as well, but Trump is a unique challenge, and Lauer did not step up to that challenge last night. Dylan, why is everybody hating on Matt Lauer this morning since it's on social media and all of the criticism? What did he do wrong? Well, look, you know, political interviews, forums, town halls, debates, these are really big, significant deals. They're especially big, significant deals given all that's at stake in the 2016 election. You don't send Matt, Matt Lauer to do a political reporter's job. Look, in a debate, it might be fair to argue that you can let the two candidates fact check each other. But when it comes to these one-on-one -on -one interviews, these forums, you have to step up and play that role. That onus is on you. And Matt Lauer didn't do that. He certainly didn't do that with Donald Trump. He didn't do it on the Iraq war. He didn't do it on a number of other issues. And frankly, this criticism that he went a lot harder on Hillary Clinton than Donald Trump, I think, is well founded. I would add that the live television is really hard. I would add that caveat. <laughs> the other caveat I would add is if the candidates had allowed more time, if they had been willing to sit on that stage longer, we could have heard more and we could have heard more fact checking. But, you know, I, I agree with, with the frustration that I think so many viewers at home felt during the debate, dur during the discussion, that there wasn't more follow up from Lauer. Yes, there were time constraints, but if he had dug deeper on specific questions, we might have come away knowing more about the candidates. Yes, and if the candidates had more time and if I had wings, I'd be flying around the office right now. If I'd probably come up with a wireless microphone and I'd be fly flying around just because I'd be so I I'd be so psyched to be able to fly. If Matt Lauer was a professional on a different medium. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know live television's hard. He does it every day. Uh, the hard part is actually interviewing politicians about politics and policy when y you don't really pay that much attention to it. Right. I mean, it's not like the stakes aren't very high. Unbelievable. Uh, here is um, MSNBC's following up. Now, there's obviously it's it's a little bit difficult for folks on MSNBC to uh, discuss this because Matt Lauer is their colleague. He is in the NBC family. And so uh, it makes it a little bit sticky for them. And it creates interesting moments like the one we're going to see here. Now, 
this audio, what, what they've just come out of is they're playing the video that Donald Trump made, apparently himself. I mean, on his website, and this is probably, he had a notion, I may run for president. And he said, we should just go in there into Libya, take the guy out. Talking about Gaddafi. So, when, during the forum, Trump says, I was against, Gadda uh, I was against going into Libya, and I was against going into Iraq, even though Clinton started off by saying, <laughs> Donald Trump is on record, literally on a record, like an audio re record of saying, yeah, we should go into Iraq when he was on the Howard Stern show. Matt Lauer did not question Trump when he said the exact opposite. And look, you know, these things exist. We can argue about a myriad of other things, but th these are facts. And so they play that Libya clip. They come back, and here is uh, Lawrence O'Donnell saying, like, the guy just flat out lied. And Chris Matthews uh, tries to mitigate the damage to Matt Lauer. Chris Matthews, how do you debate a presidential candidate who took the position we absolutely should go into Libya, go in hard, and now says he never did? Uh, I, no one's had to really deal with that in the presidential Well, you have to call the guy a liar when you do that. That's the problem. That's the difficult thing for Matt Lauer to do because it sounds like an opinion. And you're not supposed to have an opinion in this business. But look. Hmm. I don't think that's an opinion. Not when the facts are that black and white. I mean, there's video record. There's audio record of this. Um, Matt Lauer getting dinged for a lot of different reasons. And what I haven't heard him getting dinged for. Hello, you. I'm Sam Cedar. Looking for smart, progressive talk that is occasionally amusing? Well, subscribe to our YouTube feed. Subscribe to our podcast. Like us on Facebook. And just generally enjoy us.